This week on Three Sides of the Coin, no tool, no problem. It's myself, Mark, and the lovely Lisa joins us. And we do a hit and run where we answer your questions. And boy, did you guys come up with some great ones this week. So please stay tuned. We probably read your question. And from a homework standpoint, because we forgot to do that, after you watch this, tell us what you think. Did we answer them correctly or would you have said something different? Stay tuned. This is Three Sides of the Coin, talking all things KISS. I want to rock and roll all night. You're listening to Three Sides of the Coin. Coin. Coin.com. Subscribe on YouTube. Follow and rate us on Spotify. Subscribe and leave a review on iTunes. We appreciate your support. It's the the A-team. Yep. It is. It is the A-team. No Michael, no problem. No problem. Yeah, we can't tell you that he quit because he has all of the recording gear. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, look, light today. Light. I know. I'm impressed. I'm like, who is this person? I can see him. Well, the only reason is because I I got the the triple vinyl and I wanted to open it. So. Oh, excellent. That's the only reason you have light? Well, that. I actually. You know, this day up until April is Tuesday evenings are just a MF for me because I, you know, Monday's hockey night and I get home real late and I get almost no sleep. I don't have a time to shower. I'm just a fucking mess on Tuesday evenings. I can't wait to just sit home and do nothing. So I don't get a chance to to take a shower or anything like that. But I mean, don't get me wrong get get done with hockey i take a shower i take a shower like one in the morning so you know it's just it's just brutal so anyways today as i was coming downstairs i'm like okay my 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 vinyl showed up I wanted to open it i was sitting there talking to lisa and i'm like you know my hair, hair doesn't look too terrible and fuck it just just keep the light on today you look handsome mark yeah why thank you and a, Liz, and a, Liz wants you to know, keep the light on usually doesn't she there you go. In a round Adonis sort of way. See, there you go. It's all good, brother. There, there you go. There you go. Well, today, Tommy has a great idea for a show, and I love when we do these. So, Tommy, uh, uh, as Mike would say, what, are you going to do your job today? Is, is yeah, I am. Today? But I'm yeah. not going to do, let's not do comments. Let's just go right into this since we have short, such a short period of time. First off, I want to say to each and every one of you that have participated and all of our listeners, thank you so much for the support. Every once in a while when we're short on a show idea or we just are like want to do something different, we'll post something just so you know in the future, day of. So we always record on Tuesdays, 5.30 Eastern time. So Today, we're doing a hit and run, which for those of you that are not familiar, you, the listeners, ask us questions. I read through them and we answer them. So in the future, we will do this again. We do it a couple times a year. Just keep an eye on our Facebook page, Three Sides of the Coin, on Tuesday afternoons, because that's usually when I post. So anyways, I put up the post that we're doing a hit and run, and we're going to answer your questions. So here we go. Um, Billy Shears. Has your favorite member in KISS ever changed throughout the years or has, always been, or has it always been the same? Wait, say it again. Has your favorite member in KISS ever changed throughout the years or has it always been the same? Have you always been had a favorite, the same favorite? I don't know if I've actually ever had like a favorite favorite. I think I have favorite ones based on their personality. You know what I mean? Like... I like Gene because he's Gene. You know what I mean? He has yeah. like a little, like his crazy personality. I like Paul because he's like subdued. You know what I mean? I don't know if I have an actual favorite, but no, fair enough. Mark? My favorite, my favorite member was always Gene. I mean, especially younger and and those of you and I've talked about it on the show. You know, I I really came from a. a I like universal monsters. And so, you know, when I was getting into kiss, you know, when I was nine, 10 years old, you know, so obviously I was drawn towards Gene because he wasn't the, you know, especially for the younger fans. I, it, unless you did this in real time, you know, you don't understand the, the, he really was the demon. I mean, he really, he was like a scary guy. Mm-hmm you know, and, and until probably right around dynasty. Cause that's when he started letting his, 
hair down, so to speak. And and for the old school fans, I'm sure you had the same re- uh, reaction I did when because I was an Alice Cooper fan. But right when Alice started doing the Muppet Show and being on, um, you know, the, uh, the late just yeah, Hollywood, it just changed. You're like, oh, you know. He kind of let his guard down. There's nothing wrong with that. But but uh, I want to kind of branch off just a little bit because I know Tommy will, will know what I'm talking about. And, and Lisa, you exactly too. When we were younger fans, you know, with the mystique, because all three of us and, you know, Michael, if he was here too, the four of us, we all got into Kiss when they were still wearing makeup. There was, you know, still never seen their faces. And as Lisa just kind of pointed out, it changed. I mean, you know, Gene was always my favorite. And if you were to ask me, I would say Gene's my favorite. But now that over the years got to be friend, some of us very close with members of the band and, you know, first name basis sort of thing, your your perception changes when you get older. Um, so, I mean, that's that takes some of the mystique away because you really see them as, as people and you can shoot them an email or make a phone call or, you know, it, it just, it's, it's different, you know, Tommy, what do you, what do you think about that? Well, and I think that's a really nice way to say it because that's another thing to me. There's two things that I can't share with everyone from a feeling standpoint, because I can't put you right there. The first one is to what Mark said is when we were young, we got into it when you didn't know who any of them were. So I would say that I gravitated mostly towards Paul and Ace. I would say Paul has always been my favorite just simply because I love the songs and I love the vocals and and all of that. But yet Ace very much so too. And it's changed over the years, but it hasn't um, because I separate the character in the band from the actual person. So it's hard to explain if you haven't sat in a room with some of these guys and talked to them, that there's just a difference. You know, um, when I was young, most, most kids, Gene, 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 that was their favorite because he was kind of the face of the band. He was always on the covers and all that. But I would say now my favorite member is probably Tommy just because I've gotten to know him so well. So, but again, it's different because it's, the, the original four is different than what they're doing now. And so are you asking me as a child? But you're not because you're saying, has it changed? It's just different. I can't, I don't know, Mark, I'm, I'm losing it here. And do you, Help do, me out. And do you, I mean, and also, I mean, your favorite member, is that musically favorite? Is it personally favorite? Because well, I, I think it also can vary based on, you know, based on that criteria too. I'm just taking it from its face value that like, who's your favorite member? You know what I mean? Because when we were kids, I felt like all of my friends that were KISS fans all had a favorite member, whoever it was. There were some that loved Gene, Paul, Peter, or Ace. It was just different. But it's just different now because I don't look at it the same way. It's bizarre. It's like I was backstage and I was having a conversation with Paul. And to me at this point now, and this may sound weird to some of you, it's like having a conversation with someone you've known forever because I don't look at it that way. But then the moment that they come out of their dressing rooms with all the stuff on, I'm like 12 again and going, even though we just had a conversation three hours ago, now you're Paul Stanley. You know what I mean? So I hope that really make up and then talking to them without like, like when, when the kids met them, you know, when we met them after the show, the kids saw them at first in their makeup on and they were like intim- totally intimidated by them because they were huge with their makeup on and it yeah. was a whole other persona. And then after the show, the kids saw them without their makeup on and they were like, oh, you know, it was like, it was like a different, you know, like you said, it's like in that one moment, you're like, oh, shit, yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it takes you back to when you were a little kid. You're like, oh my and, God. And I'm not, and, and I, please, I'm not, Mark isn't either. We're not, we're not bragging. We're just saying this is our experience because you transcend something when you get to know people that changes your perspective 
about how the how you view them and it shouldn't matter whether it's a musician or it's your mentor or it's your boss or whomever it's really no different it's the same kind of thing so it, it's just it's changed because it doesn't feel the same anymore well tommy going back to what we say all the time on this show is we're not going to bullshit anybody you're what you just said is exactly how you feel and exactly what your situation is and mine and lisa's and you know michael's too you know, oh. we've been able to peek behind the cover, you know, it, yeah. it, 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 we have, it's just, it is what it is. You know, it and goes it, back to that, that, uh, that, that Ty Cobb quote, you know, if, if it's not bragging if you can do it. And, and in that, that vein, if you're, you're telling the truth, you know, yeah. you're not trying, you're not trying to get brownie points or go, Hey, look at me. You're like, well, you know, I, I send stuff to Tommy and we're good buddies and blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Whenever you see each other. And, well, and, yeah. And just to give you guys a little perspective, um, we, you know, cause I've done several of these meet and greet things where I've done interviews and stuff. And that's where I got to really got, to, I mean, I spent the whole day with Ace and many of you know that, and it's just different. The 12 year old me, if you would have said, Oh yeah, you're going to be driving around in your Jeep one day. I'd be like, yeah, right. <laughs> but it's just different. And the time that Mark was in town and we picked Thayer up to take him to that meet and greet thing, we were busting his balls <laughs> all the way out there just like he was one of us mm -hmm. because he is because they, he is he is yes. just a regular guy yeah because I, I i think it was mark probably i think the first thing mark said when he got in the car was something like, oh yeah just so you know tommy cleaned the car out because we got a kiss guy running with us today <laughs> 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 so anyway so i hope that out. answers your question um, I, I had to wish mine too. <laughs> well, yeah, same with Bruce. <laughs> you know, it, it's a, it, it just, you know, I don't know. They're all good people. They're all good people. Um, Nick DiTulio, what are your happiest and saddest moments as a KISS fan? Hmm. Lisa, or do you? You want I'm to go thinking, in order? I'm thinking of the saddest, but go ahead. You I, I, if I, if you want, I'll I'll you know, um, happiest, um, just being able to peek, but like I said, peek behind the curtain and, um, just have the relationship that I have with the band. You know, it's kind of cool. You know, I because this trust me, guys, that none of this wears off. You know, when I when I get the, you know, the new, the box set and stuff, I'm like, Hey, there's stuff in there. That's in the next room over there. I remember cutting that out. I, I re, you know what I mean? And the fact that I, I, you know, I'm, I'm blessed to have been able to participate in a few different, you know, releases of records, uh, you know, love gun one, the destroyer, one, this one and books and TV shows, the VH one stuff. And, that's what makes me happy because my favorite band gets a hold of me and go, Hey, dummy, what do you got? You know, we're doing this project. Uh, do you have anything you can add to it? And I'm like, Hey, here, what do you think of this? Oh, that's great. You, you know, that's what makes me happy. I, here's what makes me happy. I'm able to help my favorite band tell their story and I get to share it with all of you. That's freaking cool as a Kiss fan. There's nothing yeah. cooler. Yeah, nothing cool. cooler being able to share my passion as a Kiss fan. Not only every week, I mean, with you guys right now, but when the band goes, hey, Mark, you know, I remember one time uh, someone very high up in the Kiss organization needed a photo. They're like, if anyone's got this photo, it's you. And sure as shit, I did. Mm -hmm. And I went down and... Um, they ended up not using it because they couldn't get the um, get the rights from the person. But, you know, I, I just remember and I it's funny because the photo had the guy's stamp on the back. And I'm like, not only do I have the photo, this is this the is contact. Uh, this is the contact. So that was a good that was like I said, just silly stuff like that. Um, saddest. Um, 
probably when they took the makeup off originally. It kind of bummed me out because the mystique was gone. Don't get me wrong. It's like anything else. It's like going, I, this is, I guess, a bad analogy, but kind of like when you break up with your the girlfriend before you had, before you meet, you know, I was in a relationship for two years with a girl I, I before I met my wife. Was and this I remember the Nugent show girl? No, no, not at all. <laughs> but but if you think of it in this terms, if I didn't go through that, I wouldn't have this. Right. And that's what I mean by, you know, yeah. when when Kiss took the makeup off, I wasn't happy about it. I didn't, you know, I'm as we all kidding us, I'm just not a fan of the hair metal crazy night sort of sound it's just not not what i'm into you know that's not why i fell in love with the band musically um you know but i was rewarded you know i stayed the course and i couldn't be happier with the hottest band in the world now not only uh, with the band itself but my relationship with the band and management and crew and it's fucking awesome so yeah those are like i said that's probably my saddest and what makes me happy okay lisa I agree with Mark in terms of the happy part. You know, I never thought, you know, seven-year-old, six-year-old Lisa would be able to do the things that I can do now. Um, so I think, Mark, you summed that up pretty well, except I, I don't contribute a lot of my stuff like you do, Mark. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I think, when I, I think my saddest is like, when members started to leave, you know what I mean? Like, like when Peter Chris left and, and it was, I mean, I get it and it was probably for the best, but it, it almost felt like you're, you're breaking up a family. You know what I mean? Like, I was yeah. like, Aw. and it was, it's like, wait, what? Peter Chris is leaving. Oh my God. You know, you thought the world was going to come to an end, you know, but you know, in retrospect, if you look now, he's like, well, that's probably the best decision they made. But I think that was more, that was more of a sad moment than taking the makeup off was changing the members. And, yeah. You know, I think to me, that's what was, what was sad. Yeah. No, it makes sense. But yeah, the, that's, that's how I felt, you know? Okay. Um, for me, the saddest was when they removed the makeup and the impending five years, six years, that whole thing was a downer for me. I still supported them. I still followed them. I still went to all the shows. I was never against the, the lineup. I wasn't uh, really against the fact that they made up, they took the makeup off. It's just now they're normal. Now they're like everybody else. They're not my special band anymore. So that for me was a bummer. Um, and the following year is simply just because they seemed so lost. I was having this conversation with somebody. Oh, Brian, HBK, uh, bass player in, in Hairball. He's a huge Kiss fan. And his favorite album is Revenge. That's his absolute favorite. We were talking about how it took so long for them to get to that point. And to Mark's point, that's kind of what it is. It was more that they're chasing trends rather than they're being themselves. And when I, I had envisioned for many years that they could be what they turned out to be in Revenge. So when I saw that come out, that was like, yay and i felt like okay from that point forward i would have been happy if they would have just stayed the course with that don't get me wrong i love the reunion i love all that stuff but i really really like that record i really like their look i liked everything about it uh from uh, best uh, or happiest there's several um one of them was meeting them at the in-store in 79 as a kiss geek kid um but more so now, it's the experience of, you know, having my photos in the tour book, um, being able to experience all these things I've never thought in my life would I ever be able to experience and feel like I'm a part of something. And it's bled into other stuff. I was talking to Stevie DeCaney, too, just yesterday. And just said, you know, we we're talking and, and just thank you so much for letting me be part of, of the Buck Cherry thing. And I feel like I'm a part of the Kiss thing, the same way Mark is, where he's always giving them all these really cool items that he saved all these years. Well, what I do is I give them photos. I try to do what I can do to help out. And it's it, it to me, the happiest is they <laughs> they let me go and do whatever I want. I can shoot the whole show. And that to me is just pure joy. Anything else you guys want to add? Hey, you know, a little bit to that, and I know this sounds really, I don't know, 
hallmarkish. But what we're doing right now, this makes me happy. Seeing yeah. you two knuckleheads. Yeah, and I should have mentioned you know, that too. I was thinking more just banned. No, no, no. And I also want to ad- amend it too this way. I'm sharing Kiss with my wife, who didn't grow up as a Kiss fan. Right. Who, who I do see things through her eyes you know, many times. Again, she didn't grow up listening to Kiss, and but now she can sing along to the songs. And, you know, we go on the Kiss cruise every year and yeah. all the people, it's funny, you know, before we started, uh, you know, talking about Christmas cards and stuff, I bet you half the people we send Christmas cards to are people I met through Kiss, right? Yeah. including band members. I mean, it's just, I, I my life has just so been so enriched by this band yeah. it's just insane so that's yeah. Right. you're absolutely right yeah and 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 the experiences that we've had you know jeez oh, <laughs> I know, I know. You know i cannot wait to go i would love to go to a concert with you too well you have to we can make yeah. that happen you imagine do how more much dates. Fun that would be well we'll come oh, down to I... where you are because Michael is the one who really can't travel because he's still got Thule, yep. who's very young. And I, I get it, you know. No, I, trust me. I, with Lily and James being a little bit older, if yep. we come down to you, you can break away. Yes. Oh, my God. I totally can. Um, so, yeah, that all that that as well. There's just, I feel so blessed. Um, next one, Dana Cooper. Did or do you guys have any pets named after anything Kiss? I saw that was a cute, that was a cute question. Yeah. Well, anyone? I don't, I don't, but I'm trying to oh. think if I ever did though. Okay. We had, we had a black cat uh, in the eighties named Ace and we had a little dog in the nineties named Shandy. Hmm. Yeah. I never did. Now that I, I had to think for a minute, but no, I never did. Well, and, and Mark's name is Schmeckel, God of Thunder. So I don't there, you know. there you go. There you go. No, I've never been a, you know what? I, because I care, um, I've never had pets just for the sake that we are always on the go. I remember when my kids were younger, how we were at the hockey rink every night or my daughter was at dance or we were gone constantly and i'm like yeah. if we're gonna have animals we're never gonna be here we're always on the road we're in right. florida well yeah, that's okay. I, I always, okay. yeah so we never had any pets um okay next one brian Bazer. will we ever see the re-release of the elder with the original dialogue that was recorded by the actors I don't think I don't think much of that even exists. You know what I mean? They they didn't get they didn't get far on that at all. Well, and doesn't this question actually go back to the discussion we had a few months ago about buying the box sets and supporting that if you want to see these other things get released? That's why it was just such a killjoy for me when um, whoever it was started releasing all that audio right before the creatures box set almost trying to get it to tank and i just thought that that was that's the kind of crap that's going to messing everything up for everyone <laughs> you know the best part this one's rocking this one matter of fact i talked to somebody over at universal a couple days ago blown away on a matter of fact it re- i think i said it last show it, it re-entered the charts well i know but we didn't you didn't say any more than that so please indulge us what did you hear Oh, I'm just saying it's doing very well. And, and I wanted to actually piggyback on that information as why I don't think, and this is just my opinion. I have no inside baseball on this. You got to remember when they come up with this stuff, then they like, Hey, what do you have from here? It's right. not me going, Hey, this is what I think we ought to do. No, it doesn't go that way. I know where I'm at on the food chain, but like, Hey, we're doing this. We're going in this direction. What do you have? Now, this is my own personal opinion. I can't see them doing an elder one. I'll tell you why. I mean, I'm not okay. saying they won't. No, but, but here's why Here's why I don't think. Creatures is lauded by fans. I mean, and, and you can say to a degree, oh, well, so no. 
I think the elder is of interest to a lot of fans, but if you're a heavy metal guy and you're a record buyer, you know, all about this, you know, this was kiss coming back with a vengeance and, you know, and, and there's a live, you know, a live concert on, on here and it's the creatures of the night. And, and it was the raw and heavy metal. There's so much to sell on this one. And, 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 and it's selling again, creatures jumped into the top 200 charts again, you know, after it last exited the charts in 1983, got on the charts again, that that's a well, this thing sold now with the elder, are there a ton of demos? Yeah. Um, but just next to Nero ne next to zero live stuff. I mean, I've got rehearsals. I've talked about them on the show before, but I mean, there's not a ton of stuff that's going to make the record buying public go crazy about this. That I mean, are there some things? Yeah. If Ace can find his, um, you know, this where he said he, you know, played additional solos and all that. Yeah. But I don't see that capturing the casual or even even a little more than casual kiss fans like this does this captures heavy heavy metal fans this one I'll captures 645 lisa love you lisa but did <laughs> i, I was unmute say, myself you unmuted yourself because i'm you going the whole thing no what'd no. you hear um, the part with the penguin, I don't know why you're doing that, but it's kind of kinky, but I'm not going to kink shame you. I mean, hey, you want to dress up like that? Eh, whatever. No, that's all good. <laughs> talking to my, shut up. I was talking to my daughter. What did, did you, what did you hear me say? Seriously. All kidding aside, just the part about, I'll see you at 645. So. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> daughter. <laughs> got it. <Hey. laughs> I'll see my daughter <laughs> at 645. Yeah. Like I said, we're not going to kink shame Lisa. On the show. <laughs> <laughs> so Lisa, that was my opinion. I don't think that the elder would work in the grand scale. Yeah. I tell you what, I, I know that's going to end up being one of the comments here. What are you talking about? I, I really just don't. I, I just, would I, I like to see that, something like that? But I don't think it was that popular to begin with. And I don't think that, I mean, you know, with, with, um, you know, if you're looking at creatures in the creature box and I, I don't even know what's in it yet. I mean, I but, don't know. But an elder could sell because there's enough fans, depending on how many but, they need. To, but to, it's, to, to, it's only going to get that crazed. Right. Fan, you're not going to get, because put it this way. I know personally people who aren't big kiss fans who love creatures because of what it is mm -hmm. it's right. raw it's heavy it metal yeah it uh -huh. i i don't think those people are going to come out of the woodwork to buy the elder because what's the elder again it's more infamous than it is famous yeah if anything you know, it was true. like the it was the decline not not the resurrection it, it's kind but, of like perfectly i don't think we'll so. ever see a dynasty box set i i think the dynasty one would work but for a couple of reasons we there's demos that exist there's live shows that exist and you know uh the the, the dance mixes oh i think i think a dynasty one would be brilliant oh i would love a dynasty or an unmasked those are the two i, I, I don't i don't I again love an unmasked but that's definitely not gonna happen but but again they're going to sell if they do a dynasty one they're going to piggyback it on the i was made for loving you which i think i'm not a spotify guy i don't even have an account um, but somebody looked it up for me. I didn't think maybe it was on the show when we were doing is, isn't I was made for loving you. Their number it one is. stream song. Yep. Yeah. It so, is. so you're going to, you're going to play to your strengths. Right. Um, whereas now to, to go back to that, that, you know, do you think that the elder is something that they're going to be able to, again, take the curious factor out of it. There's nothing there to build on that was already a success or already seen as something that was incredible again creatures 
people realize, as Lisa said, wonderfully said, it was the resurrection. It was the reborn. They're, they're coming back. And, and, and when you talk to KISS fans, did you see the Creature Store? Oh, my God. Right. Or, you know, that, that was what everybody wanted. Well, now, is, go back to the Elder. Like I said, there's not a live show to go again. There's, right. You don't have the, the stock and trade stuff. You don't have a hit single. You don't have, you know, hours and hours and hours of live stuff to go. You don't. But what they could do, which I think would be really cool, is maybe start doing a box set of several things together. Like instead of doing the 50th anniversary of the first album, which I know they'll probably end up doing or something like that because it's the first album, it's 50 years, all that. I don't know, but I would guess. Uh, why not do um, an originals and do the first three records and do another big pile of really cool stuff. And that incorporates dress to kill where there may not be as much stuff or hotter than hell and do it that way. Either way, you got to support it if you expect them to release more. So all good. All good. Yeah. Man. All right. Uh, let me see. Uh, let me see. All right. Gary Cap, best opening track on a Kiss album, not live, not greatest hits or solo album. Best opening track on a Kiss record. Exciting. And it can't be live. Ooh, Lisa, that's a good. That's a good. Nice. Lisa. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go out of the box a little bit. I'm, I'm gonna say Psycho Circus. Oh, yeah, you stole my thunder, you son of a mm. bitch. Well, the Tri Rock City was such an obvious one. I'm gonna go. I stole your love on Love Gun. And that was that was in my mind for as number three. I, I again the the both both Psycho Circus and Detroit Rock City have that theater to them before they start you know what i mean they really do capture your imaginations and imagination in both of those songs fucking rule i i, I i'm bummed that on the, the current tour they only play half of psycho circus i want the whole enchilada as they say right so right um russell russell Shear the third mark you'll be able to to and answer this one uh and it and any of you that also asked the same or similar question to this i'm just going with russell because he was the first one in the string uh did they give any new info on the cruise about the kiss 2020 goodbye fiasco um I you, really, Mark. Uh, well i did, look it's online doc all i know is that kiss claims they were the third party that the company who did it um dropped the ball and they're very sorry but you know i i look i boy i don't even i don't even like tackling this question um i, I understand that it's just I, I was i like was told i i was told and again there's video of doc talking about it mm -hmm. that they say they want to make it right and and i hope they do um, so then look for Doc's Q&A from 2022 Kiss Cruise. Was it the first or second one? Do you know? Um, I don't even know if it was so much of a QA. and a I think some, and it's online because I personally watched okay. it. I thought it was, right. a, I I thought it was a QA. It, it, it may be. Again, I, I just saw the snippet where, where Doc does address the issue. Um, you know, if you want to get on the person thing, yeah, I, I think they handled it badly. I, I think they should have got in front of it, but you know, I don't tell them how to run their business and they don't tell me how to run mine. So fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. Uh, Brian Richards, longtime listener and friend of mine, uh, was at one of the three sides meetups you did in Minnesota a few years ago. What a great time. Any chance you guys will ever do a live podcast streaming event in the future with a live audience? Hint, hint, Minnesota. I'd love to. I brought that up before. I go. You just got to plan and I'll be there. Yeah. No, I'm it, just it, talking about doing a live episode, even on like this. I oh. would love to. Have but I want to get us all in the though. same place again, too. And, and in, in all the fairness, snow. It has to be wintertime. Yes. No, no, yes. no. What, what does it matter whether it's Mark? We can go if to Florida. Hold on, dude. If, it's, if it's in the snow, you're coming here. Who said anything about the snow? We can go to Florida. Lisa just dude. did. 
No, we we'll go to LA. Well, she said she'd go wherever we have it. That's true, I but I said... wanted the snow though. No. Oh no. Okay. No, you don't, honey. You don't want the snow. The snow's awful. We want snow. somewhere warm where you wear a bikini. Hey, now we're talking. No, seriously, we wanted to do it, guys, and we will. But the problem is, is n- number one, to organize it. And secondly, more importantly, COVID really, as you know, derailed everything for everybody. Yeah, and so we're trying to get back now. to it. We're, we're still not over. against the idea of doing like a Lake Minnetonka boat thing or a boat on the a boat cruise on the Mississippi, where we get one of the guys on the on the boat. Way down yonder in the middle. You know, to hang mm-hmm. out. We we got some ideas. We just we, we need to put it together. So yes, Brian, it will eventually happen. I hope so. I'd be yeah. I'd, you know, I'd be I'd, down for that. I mean, anyway, you just tell me when. Okay. And the other possibility too is maybe a meetup in Vegas if they do another residency yes. where we can go out there, see a couple shows, do a afternoon uh meetup of all of you wonderful fans. And I'll be in hang Vegas out. in August, by the way. Okay. You will. Mm-hmm. Nice. Conference. I'll be there. Yeah. So there you go. Speaking uh, Scott, of which, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. No, you go, go ahead. ahead. No, I was going to say I dodged a bullet this week. Liz and I last week we're going to go to Vegas to see Aerosmith. Oh. Stephen. Stephen got sick. They say so. Yes. Dodged a bullet there. Go ahead, Tom. Sorry. Uh, yeah, and and uh, off air, I, I have something to tell you about all that. Um, not him getting sick, but something with. Uh, Vegas. Uh, Scott Rogers, does Tommy need glasses? I notice him squinting a lot. Yes, I do. In fact, I'm going <laughs> tomorrow. I'm going tomorrow because I've been having eye trouble. And I'm going to go get a scan tomorrow, figure out what's wrong, and try and get it corrected. So thank you for noticing, Scott. And thanks for asking. See, people do care. Yes. Um, this is a good one, too. Jack Strebel. Would KISS have still had ongoing success if Gene and Paul left the group in the early 1980s instead of Ace and Peter? Did Ace and Peter have the business sense to keep the band going? Well, I, that's, yeah, pretty, I that's pretty easy to answer. But it's a fair, I, but it's a fair question. So. No, no, no. It's a very yeah. fair question. It's a good question. I Trust me. Please don't. don't I'm not mocking it. I'm just saying. I think history has shown exactly. Say, can you say it again one more time? Yes. Would Kiss have still had ongoing success if Gene and Paul left the group in the early 80s instead of Ace and Peter? Okay. Did Ace and Peter have the business sense to keep the band going? That's what I thought you said. Okay. Yes. All right. That's easy. It's a two word or two letter answer. And no. <laughs> oh, well, and, and, here, and here's the thing. You guys are looking at it from, uh, some may be looking at it from the standpoint of loving one member or whatever, but let's face it, if you look at every single KISS record up until 1980, even though Ace's material started ending up on the records, before Dynasty, he had one song, you know, on an album. So who's going to do all the writing when Peter writes nothing? where where's the material going to come from and you lose your your basically your two lead singers uh, even if they had the business sense I, I they'd have to find someone who would replace them that could make an impact and i can't imagine that's easy to do yeah but th- there's there's no they don't have the business sense yeah they, they i mean look just go back to the inner they even talk we're the party guys we're the rock and roll well you know um Sorry, you got to have it's the music business, not the music party guys, not uh-huh. the music friends. It's the music business, business. as, as uh, Uncle Gene always says, and is so true. So, yeah. And again, all you have to do, not so much Ace. I mean, Ace at least had the wherewithal to tour and get a band together, Peter. Well, and uh, yeah, and I'm not saying that he wouldn't continue to write great songs but can he carry a whole album album after album when he's the only main writer unless they pick depends on who they replace him with but it wouldn't be kiss and the wheels would probably come off sooner rather than later they wouldn't even have attempted it yeah no it would have been just done yeah um casey lambert what are the kiss albums that you would have liked to have had certain producers on Oh, that's easy. Yeah. 
first first record they should have let eddie kramer do it um or you know or wish they could have had eddie kramer um you know actually i wish he would have done the first three um they needed somebody it was funny on the way home it's, it's funny that that question got asked tommy because on the way home I was uh, listening to my little Led Zeppelin shuffle, but I have my shuffles the same way I do with Kiss. My first little Led Zeppelin shuffle is the first four records. Now you can hear how things, you know, technology and everything got better between the first Zeppelin album and the fourth one with Stairway to Heaven. But, you know, when I was listening to Zeppelin 2, as soon as you hear that grind, the whole lot of love, you know what I mean? That you're like, that's what's missing from the first kiss record when Deuce should have ripped your head off when you first heard it on much like it does on kiss alive that's what's missing from so you know i we don't have the time to go through that but that's one right there i think the first record had it had eddie kramer um doing i think it would have made a big difference yep lisa um i think if there was a uh better producer on the ones that like gene and paul did like from the 80s what did yeah we... i don't disagree i agree 100 percent. they even i think they even knew that that's why they was it nevison who did crazy nights yeah or who did was it uh, um yeah. but he was just trying to make them sound like heart mm-hmm. <laughs> or i think or kiss wanted to sound like heart was probably more like it you right. know and, and it just didn't again you know like they i said it's all records and phil fill arenas that's what that's what their goal was yeah um i would say all of the first three records i wish eddie kramer would have produced them because to mark's point it would have made all the difference in the world and the other one would have been monster i wish that it was ezrin i wish ezrin would have done the last two yeah or i would have taken the guys from garbage like butch figgins and whatnot and had those guys guys produce um the last kiss record but i asked them that once and they just laughed at me and i said well would you would you produce a cheap trick record they're like oh yeah god i can't get there fast enough absolutely but they had no interest in producing a kiss record um carl osdam brush has there ever been a union reunion on the kiss cruise and if not do you think that would be cool I don't think there's ever been a union reunion because you're missing Jamie hunting, right? I mean, we going authentic. Well, I mean, what's authentic anymore? True. You know, I don't even remember them playing any. I'm just going off memory. I don't remember. I don't remember that happening. Well, I mean, there was some. I mean, it was Bruce. Oh, that's right. Because you'd have to have John in there, too. Yeah. The last time I saw them perform, they played at a KISS convention in Omaha, Nebraska, that Peter. Well, there was almost one. There was almost a a, a, a union reunion at the Indie Expo. When when we were there together, was that 18 or 17? 17? I think it was 17. Remember, or was after that one? Remember, it was was, um, Brent. And Bruce and John, I forgot his name. <laughs> I remember seeing wow. you speaking of the Indi- Indie Expo. <laughs> I remember one in the early, no, it was in the 90s when uh, I'm trying to, I think it was 98. I'm guessing, I'm just going off the top of my head. But I remember that was like super cool seeing them play, you know, at the expo and the, uh, because that first record, and I know Lisa and I have kind of, I think we disagree. I, I, I the Blue Room never did anything for me, but I really like the first record a lot. Okay. Um, Blue Room. No, it's it's not that it's bad, but I just thought the first record was a lot better. Um, you know, so yeah, I really like that's that's a good album. I like the first. I thing. would love to see a Union reunion. Yeah, I would too. You know, I think it would be wonderful. Um. Dennis DeJarna, DeJardins. Sorry, Dennis, I just butchered that. Have you ever tried to reach out to Anton Fig for an interview? I don't know. Have we? I haven't. 
Not that I wouldn't want to, I'd love to speak to him, but yeah, I mean, that's a great idea. I think we probably should, and I can't believe we haven't. Uh, I think we did once, but at the time he was still with Letterman and was really busy, but we could act, we could ask, you know. Um, okay, so this is an interesting question. I'm not sure exactly about this, so I'm just going to read it. This is from Richard Hardman. Have you all? Can you all give some advice to me as to where to star, start, I'm assuming, start in my KISS journey? I am 50 years old and never really a fan of the band, but after watching you guys for the last few years, I'm starting to dig some of their stuff. That's easy. Okay. You really, you can't go, just buy the first three live record. I mean, KISS, yeah. live, Kiss live 2 and KISS live 3. Okay. And then you kind of will get your feet wet enough to go, which, you know, um, and maybe even add on to that, uh, get the uh, Vegas thing. Those, those four documents, I'm, I'm assuming all four documents are on, again, I don't do Spotify. Um, I'm assuming you can go to Spotify and listen to Kiss Alive, Kiss Alive 2, Kiss Alive 3, and the Vegas thing, what was that, 2016? When, when did that come out? Um, I don't know. Probably. Anyways, yeah. um, but 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 that's my point. I mean, you, you could. I would start there. It's it's easy to you know to, and then go. You know what 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 did I like? What you know that and I and I really think something like. Uh, and if you just wanted one, probably one of the like greatest kiss or something like that because. It's got everything from non-makeup stuff to, you know, yeah. stuff from the first Mix. record. Mix. Lisa, do you have anything to add to that? No, I was. No, I agree. Start with start with classic, okay. and then work your way. It, peel back the onion. Okay. Uh, Matt Rayner, the for those of you that don't know, was the creator of the brand Vold Ilk. So thank you, Matt, for making his head swell even bigger than it was at the time. Uh, he has two questions that are kind of the same, and he was trying to keep it simple for someone like myself. Um, he wants to know if, if, in all of the history of the band, because of all the different stories that we've heard, if you could be a fly on the wall in one situation or one specific spot in history, to either see the whole thing transpire to know the actual truth about something that everyone has a different story about, or to be just a part of history somewhere where you could just be a fly in the wall, what would it be? Oh, I can jump right on that one. Please do. When Peter came back with his music sheet music stand in 1980, when they finally let him go because they had 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 enough. That was right before they got Eric Carr. They knew Peter had to go, but they gave him one last chance. And Peter showed up with, Paul talks about it in his book. Peter shows yeah. up with sheet music and a music stand and says he reads music now and he's all better. And you know what I mean? And uh, Paul said they went to rehearse and they sounded as bad or worse than they ever did. So that's when they knew that Peter had to go. Um, I would have loved to have been at that meeting. I would have loved to have heard that conversation. I would have loved, as ACDC once sang, to have been a fly on the wall. Yep. Lisa? Um, I would love to be on the fly on the wall when um, the whole um, the meeting happened when they got rid of, like you said, when they got rid of Peter. I would have loved to have been there. And know the truth. What happened? Did you get fired? Did you th I mean, I would love to know what, what the whole, what went down. And the same time when Ace got let go too. That's what I think. I'm going to take a little bit different of an approach. I wish I could have been on a, fl a fly on the wall to see what, see and feel what it would have been like to be at one of those early shows at like the Coventry. Oh. You know? It, it, I, and I would answer the same thing if it was a Beatles question. I would want to go to the Cavern Club just to see something of this magnitude before it took off the way that it did. 
Um, Michael Dane, any updates on a possible KISS 2.0? None. No, I, that's not something I even pay attention to. Okay. I'm, again, I'm not trying to blow off your question. No, it's no, no, no. Question. These look, we're taking them as we go, and these guys, everyone's interested, and we try to look, expand like, on. Like I said, Tommy, we give you the honest truth yep. all the time, and my yep. honest answer is ah, it's not something I even pay attention to. So I'm going to go on a, out on a limb and make something up. I think that once the tour is over that they will still do shows at, at like festivals and maybe residencies and stuff like that. And the 2.0 could be a touring act that they put together. And then at that point, they will probably try to put an end to all of the um, tribute shows. And it'll be something like that. That would be my guess. Um, Joe Otero, why do you think Peter used Pearl drums on the reunion tour? Wasn't he endorsed by DW at the time? Drum guy. I always thought he used Pearl. I don't know. He's using DW. Again, I'll be honest. I didn't pay a ton of attention to, oh, I mean, um, <laughs> whatever he's getting for free, whatever they're getting the most money for. I mean, there's, right. There's no well, brand. There's no brand allegiance at, you know, at, at that. Yeah. At that point, it was whoever offered up the best deal because obviously we all know he switched to DW, um, you know, well, and also too, I want to say that these are all taken from the Facebook post today, which I'll leave up into next week. So if you want to scroll back a week on our Facebook page on the three sides of the coin, you can read, there's a lot of fan interaction here where fans are answering questions. So Robert Erickson gives some pretty good detail to Joe in regards to that question. So if you guys want to read back through it, please do. All right. So here we go. We will continue on. Um, Aaron Higgins, will you offer the cool three sides hats I've seen Mike wear? Sure. <laughs> Who's our merch guy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. If it's something you want, Aaron, absolutely. I didn't know they weren't even for available. So I'll, I'll talk to Michael about that um, and we'll see what he can do. Uh, let me see. Uh, Tapak. I can't pronounce your last name. I'm not even going to try, but I'm glad you're here. So I apologize in advance. I'm just going to read your question. After 10 years of your show and Kiss winding down an active band, what will there be left to talk about after the final show? Will the show still be weekly or sporadic as Kiss related news comes out? Uh, one off shows, guest appearances, new merch, members, deaths, etc. cetera. Um, and who is your holy grail guest that you have not been able to get on the show yet? Well, I think, and I think, Tommy, you'd agree with me on this. KISS is really secondary in a lot of ways to the reason I show up every week. I show up to make fun of Tommy. and <laughs> He does. He does. Well, kidding aside, I can't wait to see these three knuckleheads when on Tuesdays. That's why I plan my Tuesday around. Uh, I, as I, I don't know if I said this one when tape was rolling or not, but Tuesday evening is actually a mother scratcher for me because I'm out late every Monday uh, playing hockey. And by the time I get home, I'm just wore down. I really have to love to do this every Tuesday because Tuesday is the day. Tuesday evening is the evening I'm at my, at my lowest energy wise. But I know I got three sides. I can't wait to power through it. I can't wait to laugh. I can't wait to talk to Kiss with you guys. So, you know, if Kiss is active, cool. We'll talk about Kiss. If Kiss is inactive, we'll talk about stuff we lived. I mean, Kiss being active or not active, we're always going to have stuff to talk about. Um, especially, you know, because all four of us are such music geeks, you know. Um, I, that's the way I look at it. I hope I answered your question because you're saying, no, when, when Kiss stops, are we going to stop? I mean, 
if we weren't having fun, I would have stopped already. You know, I think that's more of the barometer is when it's no more, fun, if it's not fun for us. As you know, when there's been lulls in the KISS schedule, we still showed up every Tuesday and, you know, ran our gums about KISS. It had nothing to do with, with them at the time, you know, Tommy. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I feel exactly the same way you do. I mean, I have my weeks where I'm just like, oh, God. Because you're just <laughs> overwhelmed with work. Like, you know, and Mark has a schedule. I have a schedule, Michael, all of that, you know. And if you if you have been listening, a lot of you will know that really this show has nothing to do with the tour cycle with them and what they're doing currently. I mean, we talk about it, but we are finding all kinds of wonderful guests that are coming out of the woodwork still after 10 years to tell their story. That's what's fascinating to me. And it's nice that people have finally stopped asking if the members are coming on because it just doesn't matter. And it's not that I don't want to have Paul on if he wants to come on or Tommy or Gene or Eric, whomever, but that's not what this is about. This is about us celebrating the band as fans and learning about things that we didn't know about. So even if they cease to tour, this show goes on as long as we feel like we're having fun doing it. And as long as you guys are tuning in and listening every week and our listenership keeps growing. So we must be doing something right and entertaining people or that wouldn't be happening. Um, so I, I plan to keep doing it as long as it's fun. And ever since Mark has come in, it's been fun. I, I can't complain about anything. I mean, there's been a few shows where I'm less than, thrilled about the outcome because I just didn't feel like it was a very good show. And then lo and behold, someone says, Oh God, that was the best show you ever done. And we're like, really? We joke really? about that. We'll get yeah. done with something, but what a stinker. As a matter of fact, I forget the one episode where like whenever Michael came on, he's like, whatever you do, don't tune in this week. We're telling you ahead of time. <laughs> don't this suck. What do we get? Oh my God. That was fucking hilarious. That's yeah. the greatest show we ever did. We're like, Oh my God, it was fucking pathetic. But yeah, hey, it's art, you know, whatever. I mean, if you want to use it in that terms, look, if you guys are happy, we're happy. I mean, yep. That's all. Yeah, and because we're doing this for ourselves. I mean, don't get me wrong. We, I feel a deep connection with you guys, and I feel an obligation to do this every week because it's become such a part of my life as well as it is those of you that are listening and watching. Um, but, but yeah, it, it really comes down to. As long as it's fun, I want to partake in it. And I don't see it ending, especially after some of the latest uh, episodes we've had and some of these amazing guests where I'm just like blown away by all the cool, interesting stuff we've learned. But I also would like to expand it a little bit more. Like we're going to have Larry Mazer back on, who is uh, Buck Cherry's manager, who used to manage KISS in the 80s, for those of you who don't know who Larry is. And just talk about what it's like to be a manager of a rock band and all that he has to do and stuff about the industry. It's still a KISS tie-in, but it goes beyond that and it answers questions of things I've always wondered about. Yeah, again, you know, I think a great example of that was Mr. Leaf a few weeks oh, ago. Oh, God, no kidding. If you guys haven't... And, and, and I'm, I come at that as not... I, I know, like, three Beach Boys tunes. You know, I that's just not my thing. But I was riveted. And I'm a, one of the freaking co-hosts. I was riveted. Yep. Yep. I mean, what a what a great conversation. And we did manage to get a kiss spin on that. That, that to me, I just, you know, we always joke, at least I've always said it with, you know, with my friends. I'm like, it's a kiss world. We just live in it because so many kiss analogies work for stuff. So many kiss things work. If you're talking about Beach Boys or, you know, whatever, being a producer or, you know, whatever, because we've had such a crazy range of guests, you know, over the last 10 years, but it all works. I mean, it, it the reason I say it all works, you're sitting here watching us and, you know, we just bypassed 8 million spins. Somebody's fucking watching it, you know? Well, yeah. <laughs> and, and there's so much more to be said, like for the, a lot of you that don't know this, Mark, I know you're aware of it now because of our, of our chat that we always have with the four of us. Adam Thielen, who happens to be one of my absolute favorite 
Vikings players of all time because he's he's one of us, meaning he's from Minnesota. He was undrafted, free agent, works his way up the ranks and becomes one of the best receivers in the NFL on my beloved team, was wearing kiss cleats last week at the Detroit show for, you know, because he was in Detroit Rock City. Okay, so now we know Adam Thielen is a KISS fan. We got to get him on to talk about KISS and football and, and rock and roll. That's exciting to me, you know, and 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 the the there's still so many people I want to talk to. Nikki Six is another one I want to get on this show. Uh, there's just, yeah, I mean, there's so many things still to cover. So as long as you guys show up and as long as we're having fun, dang it, we're going to keep doing it. You know, it's funny you talk about uh, guests because I, I, that was part of the question too. We had the one that I wanted most and, and God rest his soul. I, Michael James Jackson was the one I wanted most. Right. And when that happened and then the coolest part, you know, it's, it's for me as a fan, this kind of goes back to one of the first questions of tonight's episode, you know, what makes you happy and stuff. I was talking to Michael James Jackson on the phone. He just started calling me after he was on the show. Which is so and cool. I know. what And what an incredible gentleman. And when I saw him on the cruise, made sure we sat and talked for a while. And what a nice gentleman. And again, before that, I was just like, oh, my God, he, he did Creatures. And, oh, my God, I'd love to get him on the show. And, and then he's on the show. And next thing you know, he wants to talk to me. He's asking me questions. And I'm like. This guy's just the, got the, just the, the soul of an angel. What a great man, you know? Well, same with David Leaf. I mean, think about this, guys. I mean, really, to stop and think about this. The three of us, because I can't include Lisa in this because she's awesome, but the three of us are fucking idiots. <laughs> we really are. And we have a guy that is a UCLA professor <laughs> who has written at least two, if not three, incredibly important books about music people and he wants to come on a show with us it's and talk to Larry talk Moe and to Curly yeah. yeah I'm just like that blows my mind it's like having Einstein on with Larry Moe and Curly yeah, exactly Larry Moe and Curly have Larry I'm, yeah have, have uh, Einstein on to talk about the theory of relativity yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, it's so okay, look, we got a few more before we we wrap up here. I want to get through them and we got them all. Okay, so Nick Sampson, do you think Gene Simmons has ever dressed up as himself, the demon, for Halloween? The, this is the best part about this question. Sub question, how many KISS fans do you think told him the costume was wrong? <laughs> well, you know, I it, it this is kind of a, a cool, if you guys don't know the story, it's pretty famous in the KISS world, but when they left the Dodger stadium, they couldn't get through to their hotel and they walked to the hotel like a block or so away. And they were in full their costumes after the, but they looked like everybody else. You know what I mean? It was Halloween in Los Angeles. Oh, that's so, funny. I didn't know that. Yes. There's a, um, uh, I forget that's at, that's on, I think one of the, one of the kiss specials or whatever they had to walk a block or whatever to their hotel and they're like well we look like everybody else everyone else is dressed up so right yeah um that's fantastic i i never heard that before um okay weston harris realistically what do you think kiss will do to make their final show special or different from anything else they have done or what would you like to see them do if it was up to you. Up to me, make sure everybody, including the crazy guy is involved to an extent because I am a fan of history, regardless of what history it is. I want history to dictate how they end the show. I, I want everybody who's, who's participated in this wonderful thing we call kiss on stage at the, on during rock and roll night. I want Peter and Bruce, and I'd love to see a member of the car family up there just somewhere shaking a fucking tambourine. You know what I mean? And, and yeah. Vinny, and, and I want everybody, everybody that's ever been involved with kiss up on stage during rock and roll all night. 
And if Gene is able to play through the tears, because I trust me, I think he's going to be a mess because I, I remember I, I asked somebody very, 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 very high up in the KISS organization a question, and you'll understand the question once I tell you the answer. And they said, Mark, Gene and Paul love this. This is what they love. And that's why they do it, because they don't need the money. They don't need the notoriety. They do this for the same reason that people like Cheap Trick and Alice Cooper and Ted Nugent and all these other bands still are touring. They love it. They don't know any other way. And when you ask them to stop, what do you think is going to happen in their heart? All of those guys, Kiss and otherwise, what's going to happen in their heart? Why do you think Tom Brady continues to play? Because he needs, he needs the money? He gets his ass kicked. No, there's there's some about that fighter. There's something about that that they they don't they they want to go out on their terms. And I think when that final chord, that final bomb goes off, I think Gene's going to be a puddle more so than Paul. This this kiss is everything, and I guess that's one of the things that I earlier when when we were asked who our favorite member is. That's what I you could always tell how much. The whole character thing is with Gene, you know, but that was the weird thing really quick because I, I know I want to get going too. but Tommy, Gene abandoned it for a while. Paul never did. Right. Why do I feel that way about Gene? Why do I think Gene will take it harder than Paul? Maybe because he almost like the husband who cheated on the wife and now she's laying in the casket. And he's like, I fucked up. I should never have done that. Do you think Gene is more so that because Paul, Paul, from the beginning, Kiss was his baby, but right. Gene to, a, you know, and, and Gene will tell you in the 80s, he, he checked out. Well, and Gene cries at APS, APSCA commercial. Yes. Okay. With the dog yeah. thing. Yeah, so, yeah, he's going to ball like a little baby. Um, but I, I don't know. To answer your that question, that's a tough one because you know, you're not, they're not going to rework their set. They're not going to change the set, but I can say what I would like them to do for the last show or last run of shows is I'd like them to add all the pyro back on the sides of the stage. I would like them to put both of the cats on either side of Eric. I would like the pyro behind Eric that shoots out this way during God of Thunder and a few other areas. I'd like that put back. I would like the complete song of a hundred thousand years and of psycho circus, not cut up. I would like to see Gene stand by Sammy for an extended period of time during one of the songs and little things like that to kind of complete everything again, whether all the members are present or not is not relevant for me only because of the fact that I just think it would cause so much animosity and so many problems that I don't know if it would be worth it. Would I like to see it? Of course, but I'm trying to be realistic and go, okay, what could I affect? What could I change? What could I do uh, to add some spice? I mean, I would also say add some more songs, but that's never going to happen. So I think just, you know, give me as much pyro as you possibly can and do your best as always to bring a huge over the top show. Cause remember these last shows are the last touring shows of kiss it does not mean that you won't see them at rock fest in the summer or over in Europe or at a download or, or wherever the, the band isn't over. So let's not cry because it's ending. It's just the touring angle is going to end and you're going to have to go to Vegas or somewhere else like Aerosmith to see them. I have one addendum because when you were when you were talking because there's because I lived this, I want to see Kiss with no video screens, none. Ooh. I want just the logo, the the, the not that shit like one they that. used in Hot in the Shade. I want the one from Creatures of the Night, Kiss Alive Two. That's the logo I want in the back. Now I will tell you, I saw the very last Bob Seger concert. Now. Don't get me wrong, Bob, like every other concert, used to use the video screens. That last show, 
There was no video screens. You had to watch the concert. Right. And being that everybody from, you know, Rod Stewart on uses the big video screen Mm -hmm. these days. When you're forced to watch the show, you see it. You're like, now I remember why I liked this before there was video screens. You just watch the stage. Right. And and I think that would be great for Kiss just to have the logo, and uh, that's it. oh dinner is ready. So how, I think do, do we have one more question or we're done? No, that was it. There are a few others that I want to say. I apologize to those of you because either they were re- repeat questions, you know, uh, or things that I just we can't we can't answer, you know. Um, so we did our best to get to every single one of them. Thank you guys all for participating. If we didn't read your question, please submit a different one next time. We'll do it again after the new year. Uh, We love these shows. We love to participate with you and we will take all of your recommendations and suggestions from the hat with the logo on it that someone mentioned to a meet and greet to a live stream. We'll consider trying to make all of that happen. Yep. Thank you guys for sticking around and I hope you guys had fun. I had a ball. I had a ball. So We'll see you Let's next go. week. If you have something to say, leave a voicemail or send us a text message. Call 320-515-477 for three sides of the coin. Provided by LarryDavisVoice.com and by JessicaMarsVoice.com. That's Mars with a Z.